take getting married to bring me up here. <laughs> I've known Kate for 19 years, and I regret that I didn't get to know her sooner. It actually took Amy leaving me for Brandon, and <laughs> Shannon finally growing up, and Alice selling up all of her toys in Disney movies, and Ben not really needing a babysitter anymore. And uh, let's face it, when Jay showed up on the scene, Dan and Rebecca didn't need me anymore. <laughs> Because although I have a lot of aunts and moms and sisters that God's blessed me with, Kay is truly the one and only big sister that I've ever had. And there's a lot of things I didn't realize when I was younger and we were living together that I learned from her. It actually took me feeling like Moses for 40 years in the desert while I was over in Baghdad <laughs> to realize that Kay was my opposite. She taught me the things that I needed. When I was too judgmental, she taught me mercy. And when I was too selfish, she taught me love. Okay. I'm so glad today that you graduated from being the big sister to a wife. <laughs> so you don't have to feel like you're in the desert for 40 years either. <laughs> and with that, I don't know Tom too well, but uh, I've shared a few words with him in private about how he needs to treat my big sister. <laughs> he hasn't seen my guns yet. <laughs> God bless you both and keep you both. I met Tom back in 1999 in Hawaii. And uh, when I first met him, he was going through some hard times. And I felt like the Lord really wanted me to befriend him. And uh, when we first met, I had a hard time understanding what he was talking about. He, he'd say, oh, yeah, yeah. I just repeat back to him what I thought he was saying. <laughs> kind of funny. And I uh, well, was what I thought you said. And so our communication <laughs> kind of started out like that. But, uh, you know, I... I, I was I was praying about this and I was thinking, you know, Lord, what do you want me to say about Tom? <laughs> and there were two scriptures that came to me. Well, the first one came to me right away, and and I didn't really think that it was complete. And the second one came to me before I came here today, and uh, I like to read those. And uh, it kind of. It kind of explains our relationship. It says uh, in Proverbs, it says, A friend loves at all times, but a brother is born for adversity. And there's another scripture that I want to read, and then I'll, I'll explain it for a minute. And uh, it says, um, now, if we have now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not the words that man teaches, but that the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things to spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of God and their foolishness to him, neither can he know him them because they are spiritually discerned. And my relationship with Tom is not, I mean, you know, we worked out together and we spent a lot of time together, but our relationship, it isn't centered around sports, it isn't centered around a lot of things like that, but it's, it's, uh, it, it's centered around his relationship with the Lord and, and, and his growing in, in that way. And, uh, you know, we, you know, we talk freely about things and you know and if the Lord is showing me something and I talk to him about it Tom's really quick to to he's quick to respond to that and and he doesn't just you know he doesn't just look at things and say well I don't know about that but he he searches things out inside of himself and and, and he relates back to Jesus about the things that we're talking about to find out whether or not they're true or not 
And, and that scripture that I just read, it said the natural man doesn't understand these things. But when a man is, is born again and, and he gives his life to Jesus, then the Lord joins him to, to brothers, some on the same level, some, some who've been walking in the Lord a little bit more than them, to help them find their way. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I feel like, you know, and he'll agree with me that that is the nature of, of our relationship. And, and it is so that, you know, so that he can come into more and more of, of what the Lord wants him to come into. And, and especially as he, you know, is coming into his relationship with Cain. And that itself, you know, like that scripture that I just read, that, it, that relationship itself is not a relationship only of the natural, but it's a relationship of the spiritual. And it's a relationship that's being born in the kingdom of God. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I bear witness to this relationship, and I think that uh, <coughs> Butcher made a good choice. <laughs> It is such an honor to be here, Kay and Tom, because of being part of each other's lives. And Kay and I were more than just friends. We became sisters, true sisters. And Kay, I knew Kay probably, um, we've known each other for 17 years. And But in the beginning, we kind of didn't even recognize each other. It was like we were just off doing our own thing. We didn't. We didn't have any, uh, didn't even look at each other as friends. And I can remember, I didn't, I was a very impersonal. And so I didn't even care to get to know Kay. But there was one day that I realized she was over in Hawaii. And I thought to myself, how would I feel if I never got to know Kay? How would I really feel about that? And I wrote her a note and I said, hey, forgive me for not being a friend to you. Would you please be a friend to me and, and come back? And that was what she was feeling the same way and she ended up moving back and that's when our friendship started. Then we were inseparable. I mean, we were like bookends together. I mean, we went everywhere and we even went to Walmart together. I mean, we found jobs together, we did everything together and we fought like sisters. I mean, it, we had to have some, <laughs> we had to have some referees at times, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what that relationship the relationship with Kay made me the woman that I was that, that prepared me to marry my husband and those conflicts and those trials it, it made us it made our faith grow it, it made us more in love and care with each other but anyway what I saw with Kay is I saw her really change from darkness to light she, she really had a lot of struggles in her faith, especially with fibromyalgia and the depression and the, the heaviness of that. And then she had to watch a lot of us women get married and have children. And she watched, and she was there when I, when I had Eric, and that was a faithful friend. She was there for all of us and watching that. And she, she decided and chose that she, it was far better to love the Lord and give her life to the Lord and wait on Him and His blessing than to go after it herself. And that's why she's being honored today. And I honor you for that, Kate. That is a very good quality. That's a high quality to have as a woman, especially to take into your marriage and your service and your love. And I just wanted to read a prayer. I wrote a prayer, Kate, for you. My heart is full of joy for you today as I watch the Lord blessing you in love. My prayer is as you enter into the life of Tom is that you are mindful of your thoughts. For as a woman thinks, so is she. As you think on your husband, so will you be toward him. Your thoughts on Tom will affect your union, and as is your union, so it will be unto the Lord. Tom is the reflection of the sun, and so you are to be to Tom a crown, a glory, and a reflection of who he is. You are called to walk as children of light together, to show the world the deep love and compassion that Jesus has for people. So give no place for the devil to steal and divide you from love by allowing little foxes to spoil the vine. No man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it 
cherishes it because of the great mystery of becoming bone and flesh of each other. Let your love be without dissimulation, but reverence your husband. And it's in 1 Peter 3. And it talks about let the inward adorning and beauty of the hidden woman of the heart, the incorruptible and charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, and that's what you have on you today. Be not anxious or, or wrought up, but is, this is very precious in the sight of God. For it was Sarah who obeyed Abraham, following his guidance and headship over her, calling him Lord. For now truly you are a daughter, if you do right, and let nothing terrify you or give way to fear. <coughs> Sorry, my papers. <laughs> let your conversation be without covetousness, but speak the truth in love, that your words be seasoned with grace. Let the law of kindness be in your mouth. Okay, there is wisdom to be found in your relationship with Tom. Every wise woman builds her house, but the foolish woman plucks it down with her own hands. The devil will be there to try to give you earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom. But the wisdom from the Lord that builds up your house is in James 3, 17 and 18. I just want to read that real fast for you, too. And it says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is so in peace of them that make peace. So always make peace with your husband first. It goes well. That's better. Okay, you have truly been transformed from darkness into light, shining as a daughter of the Lord. He is blessing you for being a faithful servant in another man's home by giving up your own house to be a caregiver. Now the Lord's giving you your own house to be a caregiver over. Continue on being the daughter of God and the servant of the Lord to Tom. Stand on the word, for it will be the only thing that abides forever, and that will keep your relationship standing forever. God bless you. I love you both, and I honor you both today for giving, loving, and serving the body. Thank you.